Now, Kevin, a lot of your uh, research was it was done in the area of studying bacteria. Correct. Is that correct. Correct. Yes, particularly mutations in bacteria. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I want us to examine that for just a second mm -hmm. because I, I know, and I have heard, and many people have heard how often uh, the notion of how bacteria mutates mm -hmm. uh, and therefore survive mm -hmm. as being. Uh, a key uh, piece of evidence to uh, say that, well, the evolution of, of, of mankind and animals must be true because we see it in bacteria. Is, is that a proper uh, a way to, to compare it, it, them? It's even called evolution in the Petri dish. Okay. Yeah. They like using bacteria because, first off, you have very short generation times because you can get several generations in a day. You know, even if you're studying fruit flies, it takes more than a day for a generation. Okay, so, so bacteria make themselves very nice as a system when you're trying to study a lot of generations. Mm -hmm. And bacteria readily mutate, so that makes it very nice also. See, hopefully humans don't readily mutate to the extent that we constantly change our physical features. So that makes it a little tough to study humans when you're wanting to study the effects of mutations. Mm -hmm. But bacteria readily mutate, and so a lot of that makes it a very good model for studying those kind of problems, for studying what do mutations do, what causes mutations, you know, what happens to the mutants after they form.